How's it going everybody? My name's Eric and in this video we're going to take a look at the Hikdaw 21 piece analog joystick replacement kit for the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons. I think that was the cheapest one I could find on Amazon. I will put a link to it in the description if you are interested in repairing one or two of your drifting Joy-Con controllers. This kit is used to replace the well-loved analog joysticks that are experiencing some sort of problems, mostly the Joy-Con drift. When your character starts moving around without you telling it which direction to go due to wear and tear inside of the Joy-Con controller or dust that's inside of the analog stick. Keep in mind that Nintendo has released that they will do free repairs on Joy-Cons for the Joy-Con drift problem, but the turnaround time isn't going to be as fast as doing it yourself, and they've been backed up due to the COVID virus pandemic, meaning that it's gonna take even longer for them to get and repair your Joy-Con and get them back to you. So in the meantime, you're not gonna have them to play with. This would be for somebody who wants to learn a new skill, is very hands-on or wants to be hands-on, and wants their Joy-Cons up and running within two days, however long it takes for the Amazon package to arrive. And if you haven't already, if you could please give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you are not a member already. With that being said, let's get into the product and then further on in the video, let's get on to the repair. Here is the Amazon package package that we received. The total price was $9.49 before taxes and this is what we got in the mail. A bag within a bag with another bag. And the reason I went with this listing is because it came with two Joy-Cons. It said that it came with all of the tools for the repair a nice little carrying bag, and it was under $10. Now we'll put the listing in the description as well if you are interested in doing this repair. First thing in the kit is this little carry bag. They gave us two electronic screwdrivers, the Nintendo Y screwdriver and a, and a small Phillips head screwdriver that we're gonna use. The four screws on the outside, you're gonna use the Y screwdriver. The Phillips head screwdriver are for things that are inside of the joystick. They've given us a pair of of plastic tweezers. We're gonna probably use this for ribbon cable removal or ribbon cable installation. Give us a small little plastic spudger which you can use to separate it once the screws come out or just manipulating parts on the board itself. They've given us two replacement analog sticks as well as some replacement screws in there. And last but not least, they give you some six colored Joy-Con analog stick little cover things. And there are indeed 21 pieces to this kit. One of them being a nice little storage container to put everything when you're done. Now we're gonna get into the repair portion. And I want to show you that these Joy-Cons are indeed drifting. We're gonna go to system setting, down to controllers and sensors. We're gonna go to calibrate control sticks. Okay, there's definitely a drift on the right joystick. As you can see, I'm pressing down. We're gonna do the one on the right and we have two analog sticks. We'll have one left over for a future repair on another problematic Joy-Con. So we're gonna work on this one. The first thing we have to do is take off these four screws and that is the tri-wing screwdriver. You can tell that it's the tri-wing by that little sign right there or by looking at the actual bit. If you look at these tri-wing screws, it's the one that fits these tri-wing screws. We're gonna take these out. You put apply pressure with the palm of your hand while you twist. And that's why they have a swivel right here on the screwdriver. And you're gonna remove all four of these screws. And they are all the same size, so you do not have to worry about getting them mixed up. Now that those four screws are out, we're going to take this plastic spudger, work it between the Joy-Con and separate it kind of like that. And it should pop the bottom off. And you wanna be careful here when you separate it, you wanna rotate it on the rail side. You're gonna rotate it like that because there are two ribbon cables right here that you do not wanna damage, as you can see right there. Now that we are open, now that we're open, we're going to take the plastic spudger, lift out the NFC chip, and place that to the side. It's a little antenna looking connector that goes to the motherboard and then it rests right here into this little plastic holder right next to the battery. The next thing we're gonna do is pry underneath the battery. There is a little bit of adhesive there. We're gonna take our spudger and we're going to pry up 
that battery connector to remove all power from the Joy-Con. Makes it a little bit safer to work on when there's no power connected to the board. We're now gonna take the Phillips head screwdriver. We're going to remove these one, two, three Phillips head screws and place those to the side. And I like how these screwdrivers that they included in the kit have a little bit of magnetism to it. So this it pulls the screws right out. Look at that. Now we're gonna lift this tray and rotate it out of the way. And you wanna be very, very careful because there is a ribbon cable connector at the top left here by the R trigger. So I'm going to show you lift and we're gonna kind of rotate it out of the way just like that. It's connected right here. There's almost no slack on this. It's very important to be, to be gentle here because you could damage that connector or that ribbon cable. This gives us access to the joystick right here. Two Phillips head screws and a ribbon cable. The ribbon cable is connected, it is locked in with a latch. So you will have to pull a little plastic latch towards you gently. You will see it lift right here. As you can see, it's kind of wiggling. It's normally in the down position, but I'm pulling it towards me. And then you can pull the ribbon cable out with your plastic tweezers. Take these two Phillips head screws out and you can gently pull the Joy-Con out. This kind of is tricky because there is, there is this like really thin papery plastic thing that likes to kind of move around when you do this. You can't really see from that angle, but this little paper has pulled up a little bit and I'm gonna show you how to get that back in if this were to happen to you. There is a little piece of plastic right here that you have to push while that thin piece of plastic gets lowered and it will slide back under this little piece of plastic. The cut part is on the left side right here and it does come cut, you didn't break it and it should be laying flat. Now we're going to take our replacement and push it back into that hole. You have to lift up a little bit and press in order to get it to go through that hole. And this may happen to you because it just happened to me. The R button popped off and this is really easy to get back in. The R button has a spring. If that gets dislodged, it goes right there. In between this hinge, there is a little place for the spring to go. And then when you reinstall it, you're gonna, you're gonna put this side in first. That spring goes on that little shelf and then the top of it hooks under this little right angle right there. It comes out very easily and it goes back in very easily, but it's held in when this piece of plastic goes on top of it. Now we're going to reinstall two screws. Now we're going to place the ribbon cable back into where it came from. And this can be kind of tricky as well. I found the best way for me to do it is to grab it right by the neck, pull back a little bit. I found, grab it right by the neck, pull back a little bit, and to get it in the hole, but not all the way in. And then take the plastic spudger from the back and slide it in. There's a little piece of plastic on the ribbon cable you can hook onto and push it. And then we're going to lock that ribbon cable with that little black lock. You're gonna press the, the black towards the board in order to lock that ribbon cable into place. We're gonna put this tray back where it needs to go by rotating it towards us and then flipping it back around. That is probably one of the hardest things right there. Is you have to be very, very gentle. We're gonna put these three little gold screws back in. Now we're gonna reinstall the battery, which only goes one way with the connector matching up with this little hole in this pocket right here. And you just wanna press that in. Now we're gonna reconnect the battery to the board, which can be kind of tricky with the way that the wires are oriented. There's a side of the connector that's completely black. When the gold is poking through, that is the top. So you have to rotate the wire a certain way. It's easier to grab with your tweezers and you're gonna kinda tell it where to go. And then press it down from the top. You will hear a little click and it should connect fairly easily if it's in the correct position. Now we're going to reinstall the NFC reader right here. 
and route the cable where it needs to go. And it just slides in right there and the cable routes all the way around the battery. We're gonna rotate the back of the case and the rail back to where it goes press down on it on all sides and reinstall these four tri-wing screws. Okay, you wanna check to make sure everything is flat all the way around. It looks like it all mated together really, really well. All of your buttons press like they should. Everything's tight. Now we're going to do a final test on this Joy-Con controller. That's always a good sign and a good thing to hear. We're going to press home, go to settings, go to system settings, down to controllers and sensors, test input devices, test controller buttons, and we're going to press all of the buttons. Just to make sure that they work. The home button will not work here it'll just bring you back home. We're gonna go back to system settings. We're going to go to controllers and sensors, down here to calibrate control sticks, press down on this right joystick, and then now test this. As you can see, it comes back right like it should. There's no drift, there's no delay, there's no drag. Everything is good to go. I ended up not using the screws that they included. I, th I think you would replace the tri-wing screws with a Phillips head screw that they included, but I don't mind the back being tri-wings. I think it actually is better to keep it original if possible. So I just left them like that. And as you can see, the Hickdaw Amazon joystick seems to be working perfectly fine. I don't know about longevity. If you or anyone you know has done a replacement on a joystick, please let me know in the comments if they last as long as the original joysticks, if they're shorter lived, if they're longer lived, because I would like to know and time will tell as I've done this repair on a couple of my own joy cons as well but thank you guys so much for watching if you made it all the way to the end if you haven't already please give it a thumbs up if you have any questions about the repair or if you want to see me do a specific repair on the left joy con let me know in the comments section below thank you guys again for watching and i will talk to you in the next video bye